So I'm so happy that I'm here and I'm going to teach you some things, real lessons. So several things you're going to need. You are going to need, um, of course, your notebook to take notes. Okay. You want to take notes tonight. Um, your pen. I posted in uh, Instagram to have a white sheet of paper because you're going to write a, create a chart. Okay. And um, two highlighters. Using highlighters when taking notes are always, always good. For this particular one, I would say yellow and blue or crayons, colored pencils, or if you don't have any, it's all good. But if you do have highlighters, um, yellow and blue for tonight, okay? So your notebook, your pen, and a white sheet of paper. Um, I'm just going to wait for some more people to join and greet everyone. So if you don't have that stuff, go get it. Go get it now. All right. All right. Wonderful. So shout out to all of the um, OSGs who are in here, the original original spiritual gangsters, as I, I call you all, those who have been here with me for uh, the past few years. Um, shout out to all of the Inner Circle students. Shout out to all the SDA students, one, two, three, and four. If this is your first time, we are so happy to have you. Let us know in the chat. This is a very high vibrational chat. Um, I'm the type of teacher that I'm like, if you have questions, ask. I'm not able to, sometimes I'll catch a question and I'll respond. But even if you're not clear on something, just ask in the chat. Most likely there's like, if, if Danny can't answer it, uh, there's another, we have other moderators that are there. I have other students there, people that may know the answer that you're looking for. Um, ask the question, like on the spiritual path, nobody knows everything, right? So if you have a question, ask it. And nobody's going to think like, you know, what's wrong with you? Why don't you know that, right? Don't ever be silent on the spiritual journey. Don't ever have questions and not want to ask because you're afraid of what other people will think. It's about you getting this information, doing your work, forget about what other people think, okay? <laughs> All right. So um, with that said, with that said, um, with that said, I'm going to have another live. <laughs> I'm going to have another live on Monday night to um, do a Q&A for the Inner Circle. Some people have questions about Inner Circle and the SDA. There's an announcement that I need to make about SDA. Okay. So you definitely want to be there on that live if you're interested about going deeper into um, the class, the courses that I have, the year long courses that I have. Okay. All right. Hold on one second, guys. Let me get something. Okay. All right. So. Tonight, well, let me say this. I apologize. Last night, I um, I went to review the video like at like three o'clock this afternoon, the recording from last night, and I apologize. The sound was so bad. Um, you guys stuck through it. <laughs> there was like five hundred of you that stayed, you know, throughout. So um, I know it may it may be you know the sound may have been like oh man I really can't hear her, but those who are meant to hear, hear, heard it, it didn't bother them. Um, if you're struggling with the sound, I, again, I apologize. I did not realize that that was happening. I, um, it was a setting on StreamYard that I didn't uh, um, do correctly. So my bad, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> okay, Sean says like, we got what we needed. Good, 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 good. Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Tonight, we're going to talk about um, this moon cycle. And more specifically, um, this method or this, this method, this understanding that I have, that I know that once I teach it to you, it's going to be solidified into your brain. Okay. So let's begin. Happy new moon, everyone. To those of you who don't know, it is a new moon tonight. Um, very powerful one, uh, the first one of this year, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but 
let's just go ahead and, and, and dive in. So one thing I always say is that um, as spiritual beings, we have tools. We have so many tools, right? And one of the tools that we have are the planets, okay? The moon, um, some um, cosmic bodies of like, like Chiron, for example, okay? And we have these tools um, to connect to and to use on our spiritual journey to support us in order to ascend, okay? Whether you, I, I would say this, it doesn't matter if you believe in it or not, or if you want to do the work or not, you're gonna, there's an effect that it's going to have on your body. So whether or not you believe that the moon, you can tap into the moon's energy, it doesn't matter. We all know that when it's a full moon, people act crazy. People act just emotional, just like what's, what's going on, right? It's a saying like, oh, everybody's acting crazy. Everybody's driving crazy. It must be a full moon. So there's truth in that, okay? What I'm teaching you all is to tap into that energy and use it. Don't allow it to use you, right? If you're not using your energy, someone else is. Something else is. So use your energy. Use your giftings or they get taken advantage of by others, all right? So the moon has an effect on uh, everyone on this planet. Any Anything that's water, it has an effect on, okay? You are made up of um, more than 80% water, right? I did a video talking about our, your blood. Your blood is about 60% water. You think that that red drop is something that's called blood and it's 60% of it is water, okay? So you have to understand that the moon has an effect on water, right? When it's a full moon, the tides are um, stronger. The water levels rise, okay? It has an effect on it. Things swell when it's a full moon. Things expand. All water expands during the full moon, okay? Farmers know this. Farmers know when to um, sow their seeds, when to water their plants, when to harvest, and they use the full moon, okay? Old-time hairdressers, and I learned this um, about 20, a little bit over 20 years ago um, when I was pregnant and I went to a hairdresser, my hair was natural and I wanted it to be straightened so I can just put it in a bun because I, I, did, I just did, didn't have, it was a summertime, I didn't have the energy to be trying to do my hair, right? And so um, I remember asking this woman who I love so much, she would press my hair old school, like the hot comb in the oven, right? That pressure would press my hair. And I remember asking her to trim my, my ends. And she was like, oh no, honey, it's after the full moon. You can't trim your ends until the new moon. And I was like, what? I had never heard of that before. Okay. So even um, old time hairdressers, barbers knew of this, this thing that happens with the moon. We have just, we haven't been taught it. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit about that tonight. Um, the moon is a vessel for communication, okay? So again, originally we did not communicate with our mouths. That is a dumb, dumbed down way of communication. It really is, okay? The mouth was used to uh, consume, right? This is why you can't talk and eat at the same time because it's this one uh, pathway that, air and food or, or liquid goes down. And if you're talking and, you know, eating at the same time, you can choke. Okay. So originally it was, the mouth was for us to consume, not to communicate. We communicated non-verbally. Okay. And we use the water that we are in, we are in water to communicate. Okay. We still use water to communicate. We are literally on an LCD screen, which is liquid crystal display. Okay. So um, we need to understand that first. The moon, um, which is, which it is a communication, um, let's say vessel, let's just say that. <laughs> um, the moon um, that has an effect on water also is a major time of communication. Okay. Um, and I won't go too deep into that. Let's continue. So um, 
again, we, we used to communicate ESP through water, right? Um, we are, we're learning that again. We're relearning how to do that, okay? Our spirit team communicates to us through water, okay? This is why I talked about last night. Hydration is very important, the proper hydration. Speaking of which, I um, this is some water that I've been um, experimenting with. And I basically filled a glass pitcher with like, the whole bottom is filled with the leech shungite. I put a rose quartz and a crystal quartz, and the it has like a sweet flavor. So if anyone of you use uh, crystals in your water, try that combination: elite shungite, rose quartz, and clear quartz. And the flavor is there's like a sweetness to it for some reason. All right, let's continue. Um, so I'm gonna break down the moon cycle. That's the first thing. You're on time, enlightened goddess. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the moon cycle. The second thing I'm going to do is I will explain the contract method. And then the third thing I'm going to do is I will connect it to astrology, okay, the current astrology. Again, I'm going to teach you this method. And every time there's a new moon and a full moon, you're going to know exactly what to do, exactly how to tap into it, okay? All right. Yes, I'm infinite being. Definitely um, try it. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. The water is so good. So let's talk about the lunar cycle. <clears throat> All of my students were like, again, yes, again. <laughs> I want you to be experts so you can share it with the world. So the lunar cycle is 28 days in length. Okay, I want you to Write these notes down. Take this, write this down. Teach it to your children. Teach it to, to people. The lunar cycle is 28 days. Okay. Thank you so much for the donation, Keith West. You said, peace and respect, amazing sister. I'm new here and checking out your content. I definitely enjoy studying the moon. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so the moon cycle is 28 days. We take 28 and we divide it into four. When you divide it into four, you get seven parts, okay? Now, I don't want to say seven days because we have in our mind the first of the week starts on Sunday and then it ends on Saturday. So, no, the first day, right, is the, the new moon. Now, the new moon cycle does not match our calendar. Our calendar is just, it has been manipulated. Okay, let's just say that. The calendar has been very much, as has the time, been manipulated. So we cannot say, we cannot say, well, uh, some, let's say January has a new moon and a full moon. You may have like a, a partial of a cycle in a month, right? Um, because it's 28 days, right? Some months have 31 days, some months have 30 days. So we don't want to confuse the month with the cycle. For example, it's January 21st and we have a new moon. So which one is wrong? Is the moon wrong or is the calendar incorrect? So we know it's the calendar that is incorrect. So that's the first thing I need you to understand. So when I talk about the 28 days, um, I'm, this is not pertaining to the days of the week. Okay. Day one is the new moon. Okay. The new moon, you don't see the moon in the sky. It looks like there's no moon. There's a moon. We just don't, we just see the dark, the darkness of it. Okay. Um, so the new moon. So remember I told you this 28 days and we divide it into four. You then take those four parts and you split them in half, okay? Follow me. So from day one to day 14, you have something called the waxing period, right? The waxing period. In that time, in those 14 days, the moon is growing, okay? So it goes from like what appears no moon in the sky and then you see like a crescent moon, then you see what's called waxing gibbous, and then you have the full moon. So it takes 14 days from a new moon to a full moon. 
Okay. All right. Then remember I told you there's a second part of seven days each. That part is where the full moon goes from being full to getting smaller to a new moon. That period is called the waning period. Waning, W-A-N-I-N-G. Okay, that's 14 days. It goes from being full to kind of like dying out, right? 28 days. The 29th day technically is another new moon. And then we begin the cycle again. This is so important to know. And I'm going to tell you why it's important to know this. So the moon has two major cycles, waxing and waning. Okay. The waxing period, when it's growing, takes two weeks, 14 days. The waning period, right, when it's getting smaller, right, um, takes two weeks, 14 days. It's called the waning period. Y'all follow me? Let me know in the chat if you're following me. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Good, 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 good. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So now that we have that, um, here are some basics that you need to understand. Number one, um, the new moon is when you set intentions. You do not manifest on the new moon. I'm going to break it down. Remember, I teach you knowing plus understanding equals power. Okay. I'm giving you the knowing by telling you the science, and I'm going to give you the understanding on why that's the case. So, the new moon is when we set intentions, the full moon is when we manifest. Okay. Let's talk about why. The new moon, imagine a glass of water. I wish I had another glass. Remember I said the moon uh, controls water. <clears throat> so when there's a new moon, imagine there's an empty glass of water. There's nothing in there. There's, there's, there's nothing in there. For those 14 days, when the moon is going from new to full, Imagine filling the glass up every day with water for 14 days. We set intentions on the new moon, and for 14 days, we're filling the glass up. So on the full moon, you have a full glass of water. Now you have something to back up your manifestation. You following me? Does that make sense? Okay. So that's why we manifest on the full moon. We set intentions on the new moon. What do we want to manifest? We, we, we set that intention on new moon. We uh, manifest it on the full moon, okay? The last two weeks, remember I said, after the full moon, you have the waning period. The waning period, you do nothing. You, you did the work for the first two weeks. The second two weeks, you do no work, right? The work is done. Okay. So let's talk about this, um, this, this, this method that this is something that I receive spiritually. I, per usual, I'm always in the bathroom and I receive like downloads, either meditating or in the bathroom, doing something with water. <laughs> right. So I'm like at my sink. I don't know, washing the sink or something. I don't know. And um, I don't know. It just came to me about the new moon and the full moon. And then I heard it's like a contract. And I was like, contract? So I'm just receiving this information. And I was like, yo, this is wild. So check this out. This is called the moon cycle manifestation contract method. The moon cycle manifestation contract method. When you learn this, you will never forget the process of how to manifest using the moon. 
the, the moon cycle manifestation contract method. Okay. I'm going to break it all down to you. Okay. So there's several things that have to take place in order for this to work. Number one, the manifestation, the intentions that you're setting, let's say the intentions that you're setting must be in alignment with your um, your path, your spiritual path and your soul mission, okay? It has to be in alignment with that. This is why I say it's important to know what your soul mission is. It's important to know, number one, your spiritual being and have some sort of idea what you're here to do, okay? It has to be in alignment with that. Okay. Number two, you must use the current, the current moon energy. Okay. So we're talking about what's happening astrologically. Okay. It can't be every single moon cycle that you're trying to manifest love or that that's not real. That's not true. You don't try to manifest the same thing every moon cycle. That's like, praying and hoping and wishing that something happens and you're not tapping into the the energy. You're not in alignment. So maybe it will work, but it will take a long time. This method, I'm telling you guys, stuff manifests like this. It manifests super fast. Thank you so much for the donation, Ali Hemet. Hotep, love your content. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. So number one, it must be in alignment with your path with your soul mission, right? Where you are at this time, okay? It has to be in alignment with where you are, okay? Makes sense? All right, so let's talk about this contract. So, And again, the, the name of it is the Moon Cycle Manifestation Contract Method. On the new moon, this is what you're going to do. You are going to create a contract, right? I told you all get a piece of paper. You're going to get a lined piece of paper. It has to be a lined piece of paper. You're going to use a blue pen or purple ink pen. Okay. Why? Because blue, purple, we're talking about higher vibration colors. Are you, that's just what it is. Okay. <laughs> that's just what it is. Okay. So you want to use a blue, purple ink pen. You're going to use lined paper. You are going to, at the top of the paper, write uh, whatever your name is, um, Moon Cycle Manifestation Contract. That's what you're going to write at the top of the page. You're going to write it in all caps, okay? Always write your name in all caps. That is taking ownership of your name. All right. Then you are going to proceed to come um, create the contract. Okay. The contract is between you and the universe, you and spirit. That is who the contract is between. Okay. So you're going to now create the contract. <clears throat> so you can say, this is a binding contract between whoever your name is, whatever your name is. So between Melanie and um, spirit, Melanie and God, Melanie and the universe, whatever. Okay, that's what you're going to do. And then you're going to write the conditions of the contract, aka your intentions. All right. Whatever the intentions you're trying to um, do, whatever those intentions are that you want to manifest, you're going to write it there. Now, here's the thing. Do this 
follow this to the T, guys. I'm telling you how it works. You want to do this between 3 and 5 a.m. Why? Because as I always say, you're not here by yourself. You're not here on your own. You have a whole spirit team that works with you on your path. So basically, imagine yourself at a, in a boardroom during 3 to 5 a.m., your meditation time. You, you, you're like, team, I'm creating this contract. They're like, okay. So you start doing the contract. This is a binding contract between me and the universe. <laughs> okay. All right. Number one. And then you're going to write what number one is. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do the verbiage. Okay. Because we're going to tap into spiritual language. Remember I talked about that. And we talked about that last night with the with finances. In order to really understand money, you have to understand financial language. So we have to we have to tap into spiritual language. So we're going to write the intentions down. Now, when you're at the boardroom table, your spirit team is going to they're going to be talking, and you're going to be like, okay, yeah, I it, I need to do this. This is what needs to happen. Okay, you're not doing random things. I need a house. I need a car. I need a husband. <laughs> no. Remember, number one, it must be in alignment with your um, spiritual path and your soul mission. Number two, it must be um, connected to the current energy. Okay. This may not be the energy for love. Don't put that you need love in your contract is not in alignment. Right. So you're going to write your intentions, AKA your conditions on the paper, okay? If it's not in alignment with the energy, don't put it there. It's okay if you have three things. Don't be like, oh, I'm putting everything there. I'm a, I'm a manifesting everything. <laughs> don't do that, <laughs> okay? Maybe you put 10 things. That's day one, all right? For the next 14, 13 days, for the next 13 days, you are going to get up between three and five, go meet with your board, AKA your spirit team, your ancestors, your higher self, your spirit guides, whatever deities you connect to, God, every, everything, source, the universe, you're connecting with your spirit team, you're having a board meeting. Those who are there to help you on your, your, um, your path, you're at this meeting. You're going to bring the contract back to the boardroom table. And you're going to say, okay, yesterday I created this contract. These are the, the conditions in the contract, AKA intentions. Let's discuss this. Is there something I need to modify or edit? Do I really need number three? Is number three even in alignment? Okay. Your spirit team may say cross out number three, but remember this, you need to have this in there. So add this in there. Number one is not clear enough. We don't really understand number one. What did you mean by that? You need all provisions met. What the heck does that mean? Make number one more clear. Okay. You're like, okay. And you do that. Day three, you go back between three and five to your board meeting with your contract. Okay. So here's the other thing. When you, when you finish your contract, do not fold it, keep it, keep it in your notebook, keep it in a folder. If you have an altar, put it by your altar, under your altar, put it in that area. If you're concerned with somebody picking up your paper, put it in your, your dresser drawer, put it somewhere secure. Okay. Day three, you go back to your boardroom meeting. <laughs> okay. And you see, okay, Here's a contract. You read the contract. This is a this is um, Melanie's contract, you know, binding contract with the universe. Condition number one. Oh yeah, I edited that lap yesterday. So I edited it to this. Okay. Um, condition number two, and you're going to go through the conditions actively. Your spirit team is going to advise you. You're going to do this for 13 days. Okay. By day 13, what you had on day one is going to be much different than, than on day 13, okay? 
going to look much different. Day 14 is the full moon. Okay. Your, your contract looks like scribble, scrabble, it's stuff crossed out, it's stuff added in the corners. You, there's some pictures there. It's a whole hot mess. Day 14 is the day that your contract is due. You have to submit it to the universe. Okay. Submit it to God source. You have to submit your contract on day 14, the full moon. So here is what you do. You get another piece of paper. Okay. You get another piece of paper, clean piece of paper, and you rewrite everything down. You want to write it in all caps. You have to use your blue or purple pen. You write it in all caps. Maybe on day one, you had 10 conditions or 10 intentions. Maybe by day 14, you only have five. It's okay. Those 14 days, you have clarified, you have edited, you have made it very specific. That is the work. Here's what you don't realize that's happening. Your subconscious is putting that into your conscious mind. So you'll be at work and you'll be like thinking about the, your contract, okay? You are actively working on it because every before you get up for your day between three and five, that's the first thing that you're doing. That's the first thing that's happening. So that energy is shaping. It is growing. Remember I said the new moon to the full moon. Think of empty glass of water to full glass. So every day when you're um, editing that contract, you're pouring more and more water, more and more power, right? That contract is getting more and more solidified. Day 14, you have a full glass of water. Day 14, you have written your contract in all caps. Day 14 is a day to submit your contract in. You worked on it very diligently for 14 days, okay? Day 14 is the day you do your manifestation ritual, okay? Here's what you do. You take the contract, you fold it as many times as you can fold it. You do whatever you are prompted to do. You may be prompted to bury it. You may be prompted to burn it, okay? The... The last few times I did this, I was purposely prompted to fold it and put it in a little box on my altar. And I, my spirit team wanted me to see, wanted me to revisit it and say, see, you see all these things that manifested and they manifested. It actually worked guys. Okay. So whatever you're prompted to do, take that contract. Maybe you want to take it and tie it up, tape it up, whatever. Okay. Maybe just place it like I did, is place it on your altar. Day 15, it's a non-factor. You let it go. Day 15 to 28, it is now your spirit team's job to, for them to do the work. Remember I said, you are here not by yourself. You're not here doing work by yourself. You're not alone here, right? This is now your higher self, your, your, your ancestors. Now they do the work because every day you were doing the work. Every day you were showing up. Every day you were modifying the contract. Every day you were thinking about your intentions. You were bringing them from the subconscious to the conscious space, right? Every single day. That is the work you did for two weeks. The second two weeks, you back up. You let it go. You don't do the work. Your spirit team does the work. That's on them how to figure out how to manage, how to present those things in the physical in this physical reality. Y'all following me? Let me know in the chat if this makes sense. Let me know in the chat. <clears throat> okay, good. Good. Okay. Very good. All right. This is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to actually, I told you all to get a white piece of paper because I want you to chart this. I want you to create a chart 
I'm telling you this now, you're like, oh yeah, I got it. And then if you, you may rewatch this video, you may not, but I need you to solidify it, okay? So I need you to create a chart that you're gonna place somewhere that you're going to actively be able to see, okay? You remember day one doesn't start um, the first day of the month. It starts during the new moon, all right? So I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you can see this. Can you all see this chart on the screen? Let me know if you can see it. Okay, perfect, perfect. I want you to write it down. Don't do that thing where y'all take it, don't take a screenshot of it. <laughs> I mean, you can take a screenshot and print it out if you like. But I want you to write it. Here's why I say write it, because it has been proven that when you write something, you are kinesthetically bonding it uh, to, you, to you, okay? So you can make a rudimentary chart. I'm going to go over it, okay? So we have, can you see my mouse on the screen? Let me know if you can see my mouse on the screen. <laughs> I know how y'all think. Y'all like, I'm about to screenshot this. She's talking about draw this chart out on a piece of paper. <laughs> y'all think I don't be knowing? Okay, it's okay if you can't see the mouse. It's okay. So we have the days. I'm literally showing you the days, okay? Let me see if there's a... Give me one second. No. Okay. So you have the days, literally one through 28, okay? And so we have the period. So again, we have the new moon, we have the full moon. And then remember those two weeks of the waxing period is growing. And the two weeks after the full moon is the waning period, days 15 to 28. Okay, we have the manifestation process column, okay? So let me see if I can make it bigger for you guys. Okay, is that bigger? Is that clearer? I can't really see it on my end. Let me know if it's clearer for you all. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. I didn't do nothing different. Oh my gosh. It's okay if it's blurry. Um, it's clear. Okay. It may be blurry if you're on your phone. Um, you may have to rewatch this on your computer, but I'm just gonna go through each column, okay? So then we have the manifestation uh, uh, process. So day one, which is a new moon, we set intentions, right? Then we have the first sub period of days two to seven, waxing period. We do individual work. This is your individual work period, okay? This is you doing the work physically, okay, um, during 3 to 5 a.m. Days 8, 8 to 13 is the waxing period. Again, this is you as an individual doing your work. You're getting up between 3 and 5. You have your paper. You have your contract, your pen. And again, you are um, doing that work. Day 14, the full moon is manifestation work. This is the day you do your manifestation work. And then we have 15 to 21, spiritual work period. 22 to 28th spiritual work period, okay? All right. Um, the contract method, the contract method. So we have, uh, again, day one, which is a new moon, you set intentions. You're going to write down your intentions, okay? Then we have the period, um, again, from day two to 13. This is when the, the moon is waxing, it's growing to the full moon. You are going to daily fine tune your contract with your spirit team, three to 5 a.m. That is the best time. Okay. Day 14 is your full moon ritual, okay? We just spoke on that. And days 15 to 28, you let it go. 
Know it's being take of, taken care of by your spiritual team. You don't have to do any work. You literally get to chill out for two weeks. Okay. All right. Okay. Now let's look at this last column. We're going to talk about astrology. We're going to talk about astrology. So day one, the new moon, the moon is going to be in whatever the current zodiac sign is. For example, the new moon right now is in Aquarius. The full moon is always going to be in the opposite zodiac sign, always. If you're in the new moon and you're like, well, what's, what's the full moon? The full moon is always on the opposite, okay? So the on the opposite side of Aquarius, we have Leo, okay? It's always going to be on the, on the opposite side, right? So for example, um, the next one is going to be in um, Pisces. Is it Pisces? Pisces, right? Uh, the opposite of Pisces would be Virgo, okay? Then we have, after Pisces, we have Aries. Opposite of Aries is Libra. So you guys following me? Okay, very good. So that is what you need to know. I want you to have your, create your own chart. Put your own notes in your chart, okay? Make it, put it in language that makes sense to you. This is just general, okay? So let's continue. I'm going to leave this up here for those of you who are still um, taking notes or copying this down. But does this make sense? Does seeing it visually make, make it easier for some of you? I know some of you are visual learners. So does this make it a little bit easier? Let me know. Okay, it may be your connection as well. If you're on Wi-Fi, it may be the connection if it got blurry. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so now let's talk about um, the, the new moon and the full moon. Remember I said there's a language, there's a spiritual language that I want you to tap into when you're writing your intentions, okay? So you're not just gonna say, um, I need provisions. I want provisions. Um, th there's a, a language that we're going to tap into. So let's proceed. So when it comes to Aquarius, thank you so much for the donation, Marcus Denard. You said power and strength, divine lotus flower. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So when we're talking about Aquarius, the phrase that is used for Aquarius is I know. Write that down. I know. Okay. Aquariuses are many things. Aquarius energy is many, many things. But the main phrase that we connect with uh, Aquarius is I know. Okay. I know. Okay. Now look at the opposite zodiac sign, which is the full moon. The full moon is Leo. Okay. The phrase we want to use for Leo is I will. I will. Okay. I want you to write this down, okay? So you have this for this current moon cycle because today is a new moon. So Aquarius is I know. And then we have uh, Leo, I will, okay? All right. So again, we're going to write this contract using the alignment of spiritual language. So number one in your contract, you're going to connect the new moon and the full moon energy. 
So you're going to say, I know I will, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I know I will have my rent paid by the end of the month. I don't know. Whatever it is. I know I will whatever. Okay. Now, Aquarius, again, I know Leo is I will. Now, when we have the, generally speaking, spiritually speaking, when we connect Aquarius and Leo, the phrase that we use, and this was taught by Sister Myra, Leo is the creative ruler. When we talk about the divine uh, spiritual family, the divine royal family, Leo being the creative ruler. And so in this, this period, the energy is, I know that I am the creative ruler. I know Aquarius, I am the creative ruler. Every zodiac axis, right? So again, Pisces, Virgo, Aries, Libra, each one are not, even though they're on the opposite side, they are still one and the same. One displays its energy internally, one is externally, okay? So for example, Aquarius would be internally, whereas Leo would be the external energy, okay? So Aquarius says, I know I am the creative ruler. This is the energy period that we are in currently from now for the next, for the next 28 days, okay? We're beginning the year with this energy. I know I am the creative ruler, okay? This is very true for this year. I said this year, you are going to, if you are a spiritual being and you are doing this work, you're going to know who you are. You have to be like, first things first, I'm a spiritual being. I have to stay in a place of vibrating high, okay? That's imperative for this year. Chiron is going into retrograde from March through December in Aries. Aries is I am energy. So this year, you're starting off this year with this energy of I know. I know that I'm this powerful spiritual being, okay? This is a very powerful um, full moon to start the year with. So when you are writing your contract, you're saying, I know I will what? I know I will find out what my soul mission is. I know that I will be more uh, consistent in my daily meditation. I know I will, whatever the alignment is with the current energy, it has to be in alignment. Don't say, I know I will buy the new Yeezys. <laughs> I know I will get the new Jordans. Your spirit seems to be like, are you for real? Nah, she's bugging. He's bugging out. <laughs> Don't do the most, you guys. Let me tell you something about spirituality. There is so much in information on the internet, on TikTok, or on Google, or on, on Instagram. And a lot of you guys want think that you have to do the most to get what you need. And you don't. It, there, it really is basics. You don't have to do 10 million different things. You don't have to do 10 million different um, rituals. Who does that work for? <laughs> okay. So I'm literally laying out specifically, I'm telling you specifically exactly what to do. I told you the color pen. I told you the type of paper. I made it very, very basic. This is something that I have been doing and it works. My daughters have been doing and it works. Okay. Don't do the most. Stop doing the most. Stop doing the most. We want to we want to do calculus problems and we don't even know how to do fractions. We don't even know how to do basic division and basic multiplications. Let's get to the basics first and then we can do the extras. We can build upon something. If you don't have a firm foundation, you're building on a rocky one. And you're just going to fall to pieces. You're going to be that's what's going to happen and that has happened to many people. No more of that. We know better now. Okay. Blue or purple? I don't I don't like writing in purple. Blue is um 
I prefer blue. So I use the blue. <laughs> okay, it's up to you. Some people like the color purple. All right. So this is the phrase that we're doing for this contract. I know I will whatever. Okay. Next, the next new to full moon is going to be a different energy. So you're going to use different phrases for that, whatever the energy is for that period of time. And that's what you're going to do for that particular cycle. Okay. All right. You guys got that? That was easy, right? <laughs> that was easy. That's it. That's all. That's it. It's, it's really that simple. It's really that simple. Okay. Here's what's so hard. Now you got to get up. I told you exactly how to do it. Don't be the person that's like, well, I was sleepy at that time. So I did it at 7, 7 a.m. And I, and yes, the, I, I forgot to do it yesterday. So, um, but it's okay. My spirit team understands. And then your stuff don't work out. <laughs> don't come to me like that didn't work for me, Melanie. I'm telling you how it worked for me. You have to put in the work. I talked about that. I talked about wealth, financial wealth yesterday. And I told you how it's done. There's a sacrifice you have to make. Like, for real? Like, what what is it to you? What is it to you to not just say I'm a spiritual being, I'm a goddess, I'm a whatever, and actually be that, actually be walking in that? How important is it for you? How much do you value yourself, right? Invest your own energy and your own time into doing the work, right? Which means that you may not feel like it. I tell my students, listen, sometimes I have to roll myself out of bed. I have to physically roll out of bed, fall onto the floor. Because if I meditate in the bed, I'm falling asleep. So I got to put myself on the floor, crawl over. Sometimes I don't, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, y'all, spirit team, y'all know I'm not with it this, this morning. But I know this, I need, I need guidance. Because... I'm really walking the spiritual path. I'm really trying to be spiritually led because it's easy. This life is, I don't got to do much thinking. I don't got to do the, the hard work. When things are overwhelming or stressful, my daughters know I, shut, I will shut it down. Mommy's going to go take a shower. I'm done. I don't care. It's 530. I'm done for the day. I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to bed. Don't bother me because I need a reset. I need 3 a.m. I'm waking up my spirit team like, what the heck was that yesterday? What do I need to do? Getting some clarification and moving on to the next day. That's the those are some of the hardest parts. Doing some healing and shadow work. That's some of the hardest parts. But everything else, I'm just flowing. Laba laba, as they say in Yoruba, I'm just flowing through like a butterfly. Like a hummingbird. Just do 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 going to flower and the flower with no worries. Okay. And I want the same for you all. Okay. When you are doing your contracts, day one to 13, write however you want. You can write it in cursive, write it however you want to write it. The, when you manifest, we write it all caps. So on the full moon, you want to write it in all caps. The reason why is because the English language, the way that it was originally developed was with angles. Okay. Even numbers, um, the Roman numeral numbers were a uh, initially nothing but triangles, triangles and lines, right? So in the English language, most of our uh, letters, when you write it, except for like O, okay, G, right? But most of the letters have angles. So when you write in capital letters, you write in angles, okay? So on the 14th, when you do your final contract, all caps, okay? Then you want to sign the bottom, sign such and such, sign the bottom, it's done, fold it up, like, all right, spirit team, I, I did the work, now y'all got to do the work, y'all got to make this happen, okay? All righty then, oh, I need to scroll up. Yes, the financial wealth video I did last night, actually. So um, look, 
look for the video that I did last night. Okay. Um, how do we find out what current energy is in order to know what intentions I should write? Google can be so confusing. Well, don't Google it, number one. If you're meditating, your spirit team will, will tell you what's where you are individually, okay? I do my best to come on here and say, like, this is the energy we'll be in for the next six months or the next period. Um, or you may need to connect to someone that had that can give you that information, okay? But I wouldn't just randomly Google it because you don't know who that person is on the other side of the computer writing that blog, okay? Thank you so much, Vita. Thank you. <laughs> Vita's like, you have a question, put a question mark in the front. <laughs> Vita is SDA3 student. <laughs> um, Kathy, you say this is done every month. I do it every single month. Every single month. Let me tell you. Every single month. And my spirit team told me, don't burn it. Keep it. So I, I would keep the paper on my, my altar, literally. And um, like a month later, I would open it up and I would look and I would be like, one time I brought the paper down to my daughter. Wait, it must have been a few weeks ago. I brought the paper down to my daughters to show them, like, look at the date. Mommy wrote this on this date for the new moon. And look, like, look at all these things that manifested. And they were like, what? So um, I'm telling you. But I do it every single month because, again, you can use the energy or you can let the energy use you. You can let someone else use your energy. Nobody's using my energy. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, for the Linda, you said for the first column moon cycle, what should we write there? Um, any notes you want to write? I just left it empty. I'm going to pull it back on the screen. I just have it empty. There's nothing, there was nothing for me to write there. So I just said, because this whole chart is essentially the moon cycle. So again, you create your own chart, right? And you put in now, the certain things you have to put in verbatim, like new moon, waxing period, the date, the numbers, right? But for um, like set intentions, manifestation work, the things in bold you have to put down verbatim. But um, the other parts, you put it in your own verbiage, how it, whatever um, meaning resonates with you, okay? And again, you can add extra notes. You may say, um, I need, I'm going to put it this way, right? Um, you may say, let go, let God for the waning period is, is your chart. Okay. It's your chart. My pleasure. My pleasure. Should you put your first and last name on the contract? Um, you can, you can, I, I, I just put my first name. You can put your first and last name. Absolutely. You absolutely can. Absolutely. Can I do this even if I'm not good at meditating yet? Yes. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. That's the thing. Anyone can do it. And this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is as spiritual beings, this is your stuff. This is your ancestor did this work. Okay. You just forgot about it. And you have those who are not spiritual beings doing this. You better believe, you better believe the people that were running this country were, um, the, or this world were, you better believe new moon and full moon, they didn't play around. They will cancel appointments and everything because they understood this. They knew, they learned about this. We just, it was taken from us. This knowledge was taken from us, okay? So you don't have to be an expert in meditating. There's no such thing as an expert in meditating, okay? As long as you get up, and I have a class on meditating where I go deep into it, but as long as you understand that your meditation is your time to communicate with your spirit team. Period. Okay. <laughs> That's what it is. You don't got to be doing the most. Okay. There are certain types of meditations to reach certain results. Like there's certain type of breathing things you can do or certain types of specific type of meditations. I'm just talking about getting out the bed, subduing your physical body to make a connection at a specific time and having that as a practice, a physical practice on a daily basis. So no, don't worry about, um, you know, 
being an expert at meditating. You get out of bed, you sit down, you close your eyes and you protect your space and you like spirit team, I'm here, you know, be, be in gratitude first. I always say protect your, your space. The next thing to do is be in gratitude. So thank, um, call your spirit team to you and thank them for whatever. And then sit and listen. Okay. Those are the basics. Okay. Thank you so much for the donation, B2 Society. So some of this stuff um, is at a deeper level. Some of these things I teach in my classes, I, I, there's no way I can go through all of that tonight. So I, I don't have time to go through all the phrases, go through all the life path numbers, go through all that stuff. Like really, if you want to learn this at another deeper level, I would say enroll in um, one of my classes, enroll in the inner circle because I go deep deep. Other than that, um, I really can't uh, recommend a particular website. I don't know anyone else that's doing it like this. So um, I don't want to send you astray. And I, I just don't have the physical time to do it. We'd be here for like 12 hours. <laughs> um, um, Ashwagandha, I'm not quite sure what you're um, you're saying you're saying the new moon and the full moon cycle is more than 28 days i'm not sure how you're counting it it's been that amount of time for ever um so i'm not sure how you're counting it make it make sense i would say you get a calendar and you see the new moon and you count one two you you count it physically to get the 28 days it even matches up with the woman's cycle, which is why women is called the woman's moon cycle of 28 days. Okay. Okay. Ebony, you said, can we ask for clarity on our intentions during a spiritual bath? Absolutely. That's a great time to, okay. The only thing is that if you get some information, you're in the tub, right? So you may forget. There's times where you may, like, I, I will get something, it'll drop to me. And because I don't have paper, pen on my phone to record it, by the time I grab my phone, I've lost some of it. Okay. So that's why I said, be, be intentional that you have your paper and pen and that you're, um, you're, you know, consciously writing, you know, whatever clarifications that you're getting. Okay. All right. Very good. Sh Sharon, you said, what hours are the inner circle classes? So most of the videos are on demand. Okay. Some of the classes are going to be live, but we do have live Q and A's and those are usually like 8 30 PM. Okay. Um, the days, um, the days will vary. So it's usually like Wednesday night, Thursday night. Okay. But all the videos are also recorded. Um, how do you protect your space before meditation? So really easily, this is the easiest thing. I say it's easy because I teach it to children. Um, you can say I'm surrounded by a bubble of love. Anything that's not of love can't be in my bubble. And you can, because we can visualize what a bubble looks like, we can visualize us being in that bubble. Okay. If you don't want to say that, you can say I'm in a pyramid of power. Whatever you want to say, imagine yourself in some sort of geometric shape. Okay. And imagine that in that shape, you are protected and nothing that is not high vibrational cannot come into that, that, that shape. It is not part of your spirit team. They can't come into that shape, that space. And in that space, you're protected, okay? So um, those are some methods that, that are easy to explain to use or whatever, like whatever resonates with you, okay? Um, so, so yes, Brie, yes. You said, when we do our intentions, are we writing the actions that we're going to take or just, I know I will? So I know I will, um, so we're talking about Aquarius and Leo, right? I know I'm the creative ruler. I'm starting the year off. I, I know I will find out what my soul mission is. I know I will have clarity on my soul mission, okay? Or I know I will, um, um, maybe spirit has been prompting you to, you know, go on 
uh, YouTube or Instagram and teach or share, I know I will, you know, put out my first video next, you know, next month. All right. Whatever that is for you. I don't know what it is for you as an individual. That's what you write. Okay. No, it, all day you said, does it have to be 10 intentions specifically? No, you just, this is why you, between three and five, you write, you'll know. Sometimes it's for me, it's like eight, it may be nine. So you will write until it's like, there's nothing, like there's nothing that comes to you and that's it. And then you just edit it down over the next um, 13 days. If so, if you are if you are um, inner circle of SCA students, I will um, send out the email tonight, so you will have the chart emailed to you. Um, other than that, what I would say is watch the replay. I think if you watch the replay, um, it may be clear. I'm not sure. I don't know if I if I don't think there's another place that I can post it. Okay. <clears throat> the new inner circle class is actually starting next week, 20, the 26th. So we have the orientation on the 26th. Um, it will be open for a few days after that, and then it will be um, officially closed down. Okay. Okay. Professor Melanie, my spirit team seems to be talking to me with your exact examples you just gave for intentions. Okay, then that was for you. That was for you, Melissa. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's all good, Taryn. It's all good. <laughs> um. Things are in the works, guys. Things are in the works, okay? Things are in the works. This, things are in the works. Okay. Okay. All right, wonderful, wonderful. All right, everyone. Um, don't be confused. Don't be confused. I, I literally told you what to do. I told you, do not, I said in the beginning, don't get confused with what the calendar says. I said, count it yourself, get, get it printed out, go to whatever and count one, two, do that. And, um, and that's just that. Okay. Um, and then if you have further, any further clarification, you can ask. All right. So with that said, I'm going to head out everyone. You have a wonderful, wonderful night. Sweet dreams, safe travels, and um, I'll see you all soon. I'll see you on Monday if you um, want to attend the uh, Q&A. All right, everyone. Peace. <laughs> um, how long is the full class length time frame coming up? T, I don't understand your question. You can send an email to um, the spiritdual at gmail.com to clarify, okay? All right, everyone, have a good night. Peace.